Welcome to the Real Estate and Wealth Podcast, your go-to resource for navigating the world of real estate investing and wealth creation. This podcast is brought to you by Calvert Home Mortgage Investment Corporation, your trusted, caring, and responsive short-term mortgage lender in Alberta and Ontario. We explore strategic and tactical solutions to elevate your real estate portfolio, drawing insights from seasoned Canadian investors and trusted advisors. In each episode, we dive into various aspects of real estate investing, including market trends, property analysis, financing strategies, risk management, and much more. Whether you're a seasoned real estate investor looking to expand your portfolio or a beginner taking those first steps, this podcast is for you. Perfect. So super excited for today. We got Anthony and Brennan from Cash and Homes on the pod. Uh, I know you guys have quite the extensive experience and really cool background story. So I'd love to have you guys introduce yourselves just so I don't miss anything. Okay, great. Um, I'm Anthony. I'm the, the current CEO of Cash In Homes. Um, I've been been in the real estate game here in Calgary since actually I was about 20 years old, so almost 15 years now. And uh, yeah, me and Brendan started this company back in 2020 during the pandemic, and uh, it's actually a perfect time to start a business. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought? Yeah. In middle, in middle of COVID, best yeah, yeah. time to start a business. Exactly. I yeah. guess depending on the business could have been best case or, or, or worst case. Yeah, yeah. Definitely best case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good stuff. And uh, what about um, you, Brennan? Yeah. So uh, I'm currently the uh, COO of Cash In. Uh, so I'm mainly in operations, working with investors, working on the deal specifically. Uh, as Anthony, Anthony mentioned, we're, uh, we started this business in 2020, pandemic. Uh, prior to that, I was, uh, I was an engineer and a carpenter. So I have a good understanding of uh, real estate from a different angle. And now that we came in on the business side, mm-hmm. uh, seems to work quite well we work with a lot of different you know flippers and mm-hmm. and uh and new home construction so having experience in that has really helped us and yeah we've grown our team uh, uh to echo anthony we uh we definitely picked the right time to start a business uh, usually uh when there's uh, you know tough economic times uh, that you have to think outside the box and try to figure out what people need and mm-hmm. and we've done that now uh, becoming the market leader in mm-hmm. in uh in Alberta for wholesaling and uh, servicing investors. And yeah, we plan on continuing to grow yeah. that. Perfect. And what's the story between how you guys met? How, have you guys know each other growing up or what was the story behind how, how you guys know each other? No, so super interesting actually. Um, just me being in real estate for um, as long as I have been in, and I've always kind of been in the entrepreneur space, always networking with other individuals and, and you know, looking at different opportunities. I had actually connected with a real estate agent uh, through Instagram, and then that real estate agent actually connected with Brennan through Instagram. We all kind of connected together. And uh, so long story short, me and him actually connected through Instagram, which is which is hilarious. No, the, the, yeah. the algorithms work, right? <laughs> so Going his DMs. Like, was, yeah. the, was the mutual con- the mutual contact that introduced you guys yeah it was one of my mutual friends and a friend that he had met through instagram so i grew up with the one guy actually back in saskatchewan on the farm we grew up beside each other so that that friend was you know in my kind of ecosystem since i was yeah. young right and uh and then marty i guess the other guy he uh yeah he met anthony through instagram and then those two met through instagram and that's how we met yeah. So just pretty really crazy, right? Yeah. So. so I had this idea to start. Um, I was actually doing like a little bit of wholesaling on the side with some some of the guys who actually got me into the real estate game. I realized the opportunity, you know, networked with a few guys down in Florida and Montana about, you know, wholesaling because it's a much mm-hmm. uh, bigger industry down in the U.S. And I said, you know, if I'm going to build this thing out, I'm going to need some partners involved, you know, a, a, really been an entrepreneur since I was about 19 years old and kind of did everything myself and was kind of sick of doing that. So um, I realized I got to find somebody else to get involved in this business if I'm going to start it. We all sort of connected through Instagram. And um, yeah, I mean, really from there, there was actually initially four partners where we started this business with and two of them kind of fizzled out. And um, yeah, it's actually a much larger story, I guess I could get into. But um, Brennan had dropped off the initial guy that connected us through Instagram had dropped off and then I was left with actually Brennan's partner. <laughs> Me and him did not jive at all. Yeah. Um, so he kind of dropped off and then I gave Brennan a shout and I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it with you because I knew yeah. he was a smart guy. He's an engineer, you yeah. know, good head on his shoulders, you know, really good work ethic. And uh, 
convince him to yeah. con- uh, convince him to quit his engineering job. <laughs> oh my and, yeah, uh, much. <laughs> yeah, go I from did it. go from you know your six figure salary to uh, down to a five figure salary to come work <laughs> to come to come work with me, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but, that's uh, yeah, it's it's worked out in the long run. It's kind of crazy to think back on back on that so yeah i guess just to touch on that a little bit it was actually incepted cash and homes would have been 2019 Mm -hmm. um but then you know you kind of explained that there was you know four partners down to two and then it really got uh when he called me that day it was it was late april 2020 a couple months or only a month and a half after the pandemic he's like so we doing this and it was like yeah i'm done it just felt right gut feeling and i was like okay i'll do it and uh Mm -hmm. the rest is kind of history quit engineering job yeah definitely Mm-hmm. So you had that conversation, and then how long after did you put in your your notice? Um, I was I had actually in 2019 I had already uh, quit my engineering job mm-hmm. um, the first time. The first time. <laughs> so when you when you do quit your job and you you know go pursue entrepreneurship, uh, typically there's a from what I've experienced anyways, it was a little bit of one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. Um, and I experienced that a couple times actually. Uh, and with Anthony and starting cash in, that was actually the second time that I had dropped off. And I did go back a third time mm-hmm. just for a little stint, just to top up cash reserves because uh, didn't want to take any money from the business. We wanted to invest every dollar back into the business. And that's what I did. And, you know, I didn't have the, you know, um, luxury of or, or know how or have the real estate or any kind of secondary mm-hmm. income, uh, whereas Anthony did and I didn't because and uh, so essentially I. I went back a couple months yeah. and worked, uh, I think that was in 2021 winter, Okay, just to top up, right? And then, but it worked out, right? Just kept seeing the vision and seeing it through and knowing that there's a massive opportunity in this space. That's so, so cool. Well, it's, yeah. it's always interesting, like the iterations and mm-hmm. uh, that entrepreneurs go through yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how, you know, through those iterations you're refining and getting to where you eventually want to go and 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 that's part of the it's part of it all right Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. is those call it failures to launch Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. um and any entrepreneur goes through it it's just how you persevere and how you come out the other end which Mm -hmm. usually defines success or failure absolutely um what i wanted to to hit on because a like just before we get into more is is what is wholesaling because a lot of our listeners, um, particularly investors in Alberta, yeah. I don't think know about wholesaling mm-hmm. like our Ontario or British Columbia listeners would. It was new to me. Like we've been, I, we've been, I've been in the alternative lending space for sixteen years, and and with Calvert, where we were focused on real estate investors in Alberta for eight years, and then when we went into Ontario, we really understood that this business in this industry and and right away like i was able to connect the dots and say holy shit like this is mm-hmm. this this is real value mm-hmm. across multiple stakeholders uh so just high level to our our listeners who may not be informed on the wholesaling business what what, what do you guys do mm-hmm. yeah uh, i think I, yeah I, I can answer that um so essentially we uh, we market to homeowners that want to sell their home privately. Um, they dictate the sale a little more. They can choose their closing. We offer to you know, cover fees. We don't charge a commission to them. Um, and then when we get these properties under contract, we uh, we send them to our investor list. Uh, we have core guys we work with. It's a pretty diversified list. And uh, essentially, we assign our rights to the contract to the end uh, investor. So who's ultimately going to be purchasing the property. The wholesale fee uh, really is determined just off of current market conditions. Uh, it could be the neighborhood. It could just be a function of the value that we tied it up for. Mm-hmm. You know, they could be five grand, they could be a hundred grand. It's uh, It really depends, right? Um, so that's in a nutshell what it is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, typically in the past, uh, or if you take a wholesaling course, you'll hear a lot of language like, oh, you need cash investors. Uh, well, they don't need a lot of cash because if they work with the guys like <laughs> yourselves uh, who fund our assignment fees, uh, then it's uh, they, they're able to scale yeah. up their business as well from an inventory standpoint or make their dollars go further. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's really in a nutshell what uh, what wholesaling is. Yeah, it's so, it's so simple, yet it makes so much sense yeah. mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. those people who want to sell off market, for those people 
who want to dictate uh, the, the, the terms, and yeah. particularly mm -hmm. at the time of yeah. closing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for your your buyers, your clients, one of their the hardest thing to do for a lot of investors is find that property, and you guys are experts at that yeah. inventory. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all it is. And then so everyone's clear. So all of this happens before you actually close. Like you don't close on the property. Yeah. So that's exactly yeah yeah, yeah huge. huge. So yeah, that's yeah that's really it in a nutshell. You can look at it as you know we're you know paper trading homes in a sense, but you mm -hmm. know they're they're essentially just buying the contract off of us. Yeah. And the exclusivity of that, um, especially in this market mm -hmm. right now, it's not always like this, but. Uh, you know, investors picking up inventory on the market is very difficult right now. Um, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. you guys see evaluations in a market like this. If so, an investor brings you a deal on the market, I mean, what are the chances of that going through at this time, right? It's, totally. <laughs> it's going to get bid up or, yeah. uh, or, or all sorts of things can happen in a hot market. Yeah. But in any market, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, we have a very unique service offering on both the seller and buyer side, right? I think when we started this business and because of the learnings that I took from a lot of the mentors that I had down in the US when we started marketing here, a lot of people were actually like, is this legal? I can sell <laughs> yeah. I can sell my home without a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was like it was actually a shock to me because I was like, wow, this is actually what people believe it's is so that, you, yeah. that you have to sell your home with an agent. And you don't, right? So that was a, a big part of our pitch is that you're going to save realtor fees. You're going to choose your closing date, a uh, multitude of other benefits. And then- Not um, going to have the market going through your house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, confidentiality, confidentiality is a huge one for some yeah. people, right? Yeah. Um, and then again, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of those, you know, the older generation that have accumulated real estate over a long period of time. They have a significant portfolio. You know, they're up 100% on their property they don't want inspections they don't want people coming through the properties they want to don't want to bother their tenants or anything like that they just you know they made their money let's let's pass this property on now right yeah. not not to say that they're not getting a good coin for it right yeah um but they're they're pushing it off to an end buyer which would be us or our our investors right and then we're providing that unique opportunity as well to all of our investors because again inventory right now in calgary it's, yeah. it's impossible it's to find yeah. Yeah. yeah right yeah so and do you have any stories of your first few deals? Kind of how those transpired? Mm. Um, or any, any interesting any, deals? Any inch, yeah, or just... No, we've got quite a few. <laughs> so interestingly enough, actually the first property and part of this business, how it started was I actually have um, an interest in improving my own community. Uh, some of you may know about, you know, Forest Lawn and the stigma yeah. that it has. That's where I grew up. I always wanted, you know, to see my community improve. I used to sit on the board of my community association and, you know, trying to clean up the neighborhood, drug houses, etc. cetera. Um, our first target that we were actually looking at was uh, drug houses and health orders, right? Uh, okay. So we, we found, um, we found a health order on a property in Forest Heights, mm -hmm. and we ended up finding the owner. I, I think we door knocked. Yeah. I think we door knocked the house. We did. And clearly a drug house, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> conversation. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, you know, to kind of cut to it, it's like by the time we engaged the owner, figure out who they were, they were living there. You know, there was family issues and there was drug addicts squatting in the house. Like we locked the property up. We we're walking investors <laughs> through this house and, you know, literally people using drugs in the house as we're walking investors <laughs> oh, through. Wow. You know, a lot of investors were just like, no, we want no part of this. Right. And uh, interestingly enough, what had happened is we we marketed the property and um, a guy that used to live in Calgary, who now lived in Florida, purchased the property sight unseen from Florida. He didn't care about yeah. the drug addicts or any of that. He managed to do everything from Florida to wow. purchase, purchase his house and, and clean it up. So so obviously a seasoned a season investor. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Who yeah. got it, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah, like you didn't have to. He still holds it to today, actually. I don't think really? he ever flipped it. Yeah. I'd have to check the title, but yeah. Yeah. That was our very first deal. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that mission on as it relates to like the core value of mm -hmm. safe communities, mm -hmm. rehabilitated communities are possible for all. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely a lot of what you're doing, what our investors are doing, are mm -hmm. building safe housing stock out of mm -hmm. what's already existing, yeah. which is, I think, beneficial in so many ways. Exactly. And adding housing, housing stock. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only rehabilitating and, you know, cleaning up these neighborhoods and increasing the value of them, which some people don't like, but at the end of the day, 
uh, our city is getting more taxes. Um, you know, it's creating jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, we're adding units in almost all of all flips now, other than, you know, some of your top end neighborhoods, you wouldn't put a suite in. Uh, but I'd say 80% of the most deals are, 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 are sweeting because mm -hmm. it just makes sense. People are, we're in a, we're in a time right now that's, you know, with interest rates running away and inflation, everyone not knowing how to manage their money properly is a, probably another big thing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they just, they need that mortgage subsidy, right? So, yeah. You know, our investors, you know, seen that mm, probably about a year and a half ago and they really started leaning into the suites and mm -hmm. uh, adding a suite or whether it's a semi-detached or a detached home or. Whatever, yeah, wherever like, you can slam another one in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so it like, yeah, housing is becoming more and more unattainable in terms of ownership. Mm -hmm. Whereas, right. you know, with what you guys are doing, average single family house in Calgary right now is in the 600s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when your borrowers, the, the investors, sweeting it and creating what two thousand dollars for a basement suite give or take these days mm -hmm. approximately um, yeah. uh, the banks recognize that and rental offset that and now somebody making a hundred thousand can actually afford a house mm -hmm. which is which is brilliant and a way mm -hmm. for yeah. uh the younger generation to access housing yeah without having wealthy parents exactly <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's i think it's just a great story yeah, yeah. and i'm sure you guys have probably had quite a few growing pains, you know, starting a new company. Oh, you have any stories of uh, resilience or, or key learning lessons of, you know, just what you guys have, have learned in, in growing a company during COVID that Beyond might be applicable. Partners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was one right off the hop, burning through a couple partners, but um, yeah, just working with, uh, with people that have the same values as you. Um, you know, a lot of the challenges were, building the team itself but then also just finding the right buyers that you can trust uh, there's a lot of people that you can't trust out there yeah. so you know just really leaning into those core relationships and serving them uh making sure that they're making money mm -hmm. um if they're making money then we're making money and then our sellers are making money by you know us all these deals closing right so uh there was some uh, i won't get into specific stories they're a little bit private i'd say but uh some of them yeah guys trying to skip out on payments and you know trying to just take us as uh you know no, take us not seriously they just think they can get kind of get away with things there was a lot of uh, contract issues in the early days uh, but we we've mitigated since mitigated yeah. that and have quite a streamlined process that was a lot of brain damage i would say yeah just just making sure we have those things tight and the expectations are set uh, across the board mm. uh, all mm. parties yeah definitely like I always like to say, you know, with, with the struggles yeah. of starting a new business, like business entrepreneurship, it's not for the faint of heart, right? Yeah. Like, I, I always like to say that if you're going to get into it, realize that it's it's probably the greatest journey of self-discovery that you will ever go on because you literally have to face everything. You have yeah. to face everything. You know, you can't run away from it. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're talking about something specific like real estate, there's a lot of money involved, you know, for sure. lawsuits. High stakes, that yeah. the high stakes right mm -hmm. so we could never run away from the issues that came up you yeah. know uh we'd be working 16 18 hour days to solve some of these problems you yeah. know and you just you wake up the next day and you you get to face it all you know like yeah. how many how many yeah. situations where we're just like i think this business is gonna implode yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right it was yeah <laughs> at least three times to my knowledge that it was pretty close to just mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. either me being fed up or just the the challenges seemed too insurmountable to even yeah. take on. Right? right. I was like, oh mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. just want to just throw it all away. But it's been worth it to to just push through. Yeah. And it's it's honestly something that I, like being in business and entrepreneurship since I was so young, I was able to kind of like, you know, all the experience that I've had, I was able to get through a lot of these situations. Those right. Were, it was a little bit more difficult on on Brennan's side because you were used to the go to university, get a job, engineering. Yeah, yeah. If there's yeah. issues that come up, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it falls on falls on the company. And yeah. in this situation, it was like you really learned a lot. It's yeah. like all these. It's extreme ownership is really what it comes down to. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's all on you. And I mean, I think that is with everything in life. You know, the moment that you yeah. start putting these things onto other people, blaming the government or or anything, yeah. anybody yeah. else for your own problems. I mean, you're going to lose. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, to like to touch on that with Anthony, he had a lot more experience than that. I did grow up on a farm and, you know, my family still farms and, you know, that is an entrepreneurship family, but not mm-hmm. not built out in the sense of, uh, you know, building out a team, uh, you know, marketing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you do market your grain and stuff, but it's just a, it's a whole different dynamic. So didn't have exposure to a lot of these things. And I did uh, ultimately go down the the route of engineering and, you know, very much in a box um, and seeing the whole corporate side of, you know, oil and gas industry and and then switching back to, you know, getting into real estate with Anthony and, and becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, I don't look back at that as really a bad thing because a lot of the things actually helped. Uh, totally. You know, in engineering, I think we, like I was in a small enough consulting firm, engineering consulting firm that I would manage things right from, Accounting, procurement, project management, design, um, you know, end of project, like look backs and everything and and just working with big clients and seeing their corporate structures. So all of that really is coming into play now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought it, it would come into play earlier and I was like, oh, I got all this value. And it's like, uh, no, you're gonna, you're gonna have to eat shit a little bit here first. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. some of these things. To start being able to use yeah. that institutional knowledge. Yeah. yeah, now it's coming into play. Mm-hmm. So just uh, well, patience. That's, that's the interesting yeah. thing now is that, yeah, like now that we are becoming like a bigger company, bigger corporation, that's where like my experience is actually limited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I dropped out of school when I was 16 years old. So I, I have zero corporate experience. Yeah. I jumped right into well, entrepreneurship yeah. and business. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's funny now that the stage of company that we're at, a lot of the skills you have are <laughs> extremely <laughs> valuable, right? Extremely valuable. Which so. makes a brilliant partnership. A hundred percent. able mm-hmm. to leverage each other's strengths through the process. It sounds oh, like. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're ex- very different people, but similar values and goals right yeah mm-hmm. which is uh super important with Critical. what we're doing yes yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah and the people who are buying your properties is it mainly buy and holds flips builds what's uh what's it's the a, typical investment strategy it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a mix um primarily at the start was fix and flip uh investors yeah and shortly after i think it was about a year in um it, it was about a year in just you know, getting to know the city, we drove so many neighborhoods. I think we we ended up driving 40 different neighborhoods, uh, you know, driving for dollars, door knocking. Every uh, single like, street. Every single street. We wouldn't miss a And street. you literally and knock on you, we would, of you in the car. Right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go knock on this door. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We drove yeah. Four, 40 neighborhoods, right? 40 neighborhoods. And we ended up flagging. 12 hours a day. Yeah, 12 hours a day. We ended up flagging like 12,000 properties that could be potential for us to buy mm-hmm. just based off of the the distressed look or, you know, if the owner answered and said they were going to consider to sell. So we put in our time on that front. And all we really knew was fix and flip. Uh, all, we did know about buy and hold as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were definitely just programmed to what... Uh, uh, wholesaling, like if you take a wholesaling course, they're just like, oh, yeah. fine, you know, messed up properties, and then you renovate them, right? And right. you don't really focus on other strategies, uh, but it, it, through driving through all these, you know, driving through all these neighborhoods, we kind of noticed on the inner city side, just a lot of development going on and just starting to see different opportunities. Yeah. And uh, we got approached actually by uh, a couple different parties to to say, hey, why don't you, you know, why don't, why, do you have any land? And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, I don't want to flip out. Like, we're flipping houses. We don't don't care about that. It's like, no, for redevelopment. And, you know, once we lean into that strategy, um, it really really opened us up to just diversity with working with a whole other set of buyers, builders, realtors, everyone, right? Uh, Even different financiers, right? So it's... It, it, that really expanded our business, and now we're we're still probably 70 percent flips. Um, yeah, but uh, developments are still a meaningful part of our business. Mm-hmm. The buy and hold is actually the the lowest on the on the totem pole yeah. for for deals that we wholesale. Okay, uh, just typically because if there's if you're getting closer to market values, typically when it would be classified as a, a more of a buy and hold, you know, there's no there's no sweat equity left to put in this home. It's getting a little bit closer, but it still could work from cash flow perspective mm-hmm. on an as is basis. So, uh, it, I think that's maybe the the limiting factor there. But it, you know, as we get into maybe more multifamily or some of these suited properties. Um, you know, we might we might find more opportunity with buy and hold guys. Right. But some of our fix, fix and flip guys could end up just holding. They're like, ah, you know what? I bought five from Brennan. I'm gonna, 
I speed at all of them, but I like this location the most, and I like that the piece of land that it's yeah, on for ten years down, long term yeah. down the road. You know, yeah. like, I'm going to keep one, sell five so, or four. So it's mm -hmm. it's really up to up to them. So a fix and flip guy could yeah. definitely be a yeah a, a buy and hold investor as well. But I think it also depends on the market that you're in mm -hmm. and as the market shifts as yeah. well. Because at one point, the only thing we were doing was developments, yeah. assigning yeah. properties to yeah. developers, right? Okay. And then flips completely mm -hmm. dropped off. Yeah, it's so, flipped back and forth. Uh, yeah, it could be an indicator, but it's always a it's always a hindsight. But it's depending on also the leads coming in. Um, mm -hmm. But right now it's pretty balanced. Everyone's kind of green lighted. I think we had a kind of a joke, not maybe a joke. We we would say it's like, oh, builders hit the red light. They're not buying right now. Oh, yeah. builders hit the green light, and mm -hmm. we could see it. It's like, really I you know we'd lock up land and nobody would take it, and it's like oh they got the red light mm -hmm. on. I guess they're not buying. They're not building. They, everyone's got their inventory. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now yeah. we're not really seeing that red light, green light. It's pretty much green light. Um, it's not going to be like that forever. I'm not naive to think. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, it's just interesting how the market has changed over the last four years. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it also depends on, you know, what what is happening with like federal regu regulation or any financing options that are coming out. Um, you know, at one point there was a lot of talk about like flipping taxes coming in. Yeah. And, you know, that totally changed or affects the emotions of people who are in that business. You know, what are yeah. they going to do? Is the government talking about raising interest rates, dropping interest rates? That's really affecting everything as well. There was a period there where nobody was buying anything because the interest rates were so high and nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. And then, everybody was taking a wait and see approach. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got like CMHC and MLI Select, all these programs that are coming out now where everybody's looking for land mm -hmm. to yeah. develop on. Mm -hmm. More incentives. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Mm -hmm. cool. Just curious, um, you think wholesaling is more advantageous in a seller's market or a buyer's market? Well, we've done it in both. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, we started it in a, in a pandemic, and uh, you know, you couldn't sell your house if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and we've seen both markets, and we've wholesaled in both markets. Um, I found the flatline areas are difficult. Um, because if you think about a seller's or a buyer's market, all that really matters, we know investors are always buying. Yeah. So as long as you're adjusting, whether it's a buyer's or seller's market, you're adjusting our lock-in prices. Yes. Then it's it doesn't matter. Um, so the extremes, we do really well either side. Um, it's that middle ground where we don't really know where it's going to go next. Mm -hmm. uh, we potentially could see that in the next few months. I don't know. Right now, it's definitely still a seller's market. Um, and we're seeing success, uh, but again, we've seen the success in a buyer's market as well. Mm -hmm. And in those market conditions, like, cause you're buying from somebody. Mm -hmm. So do you see them at, do you see like your seller acting different or are they like, I know, for example, in Ontario, uh, towards the peak of the market, which would have been before our, the, the monetary tightening back in March of 22, mm -hmm. it was just over exuberant mm -hmm. and the wholesalers, they they couldn't lock up properties unless they were purely speculating, right? Like the sellers had such high expectations yeah. that they couldn't get the price they wanted mm -hmm. in order to provide value to the end buyer, yeah. the, the investor. Do you Are you guys feeling that at all in Calgary? Uh, we have before, not right now. Like I, I like to always say we make most of our money when the shifts are happening, when we go from a seller mm -hmm. to a buying market or a buying from a seller market. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been in those situations where it's peak euphoria in the market and on the on the sell side and we, we can't put a deal together because they can just list on the market and get, you know, a hundred grand over ask or whatever the number right. is. Now, usually what happens with a lot of those people, we've had situations where people contact us and they go, oh, you know, yeah, I want a hundred K over what it's, it's technically worth. And then the market drops and they're being extremely greedy. And then they call us back in three months and go, okay, I'll take your offer. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, market has shifted. We're actually offering yeah. less now. Right. So right now I think there's just enough, uh, demand on the buy side. And if you just look at the economics of what's happening in Alberta, that it's not entirely affecting us because there's such a lack yeah. of inventory mm -hmm. that we can put these deals together yeah. either way. That's good. Mm -hmm. And some of our unique, uh, you know, uh, I guess you'd call it buying propositions to sellers um, that are looking to sell yeah. privately. Um, it's not really market dependent. They kind of know what they want. Um, you know, some of their expectations might be high, but, you know, we can negotiate quite well because we do 
uh, offer you know these these unique solutions that that realtors just can't get them. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're selling your home on the market, and I've done so myself. You know, I'm not against it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of our investors sell. <laughs> yeah, sell on the market <laughs> after their the market, product, right? Yeah. So. Um, what they it puts the power back in their hands. They can just like I think you even said it. They dictate the sale a little more. They can align it with their goals, whether it's moving, whether it's uh, you know helping them move, um, whether it's lawyer fees or just privacy. You know? Rent back situations. Rent back situations. Well. Like you don't get these. You do not get these solutions on the market. Right. You know. You know. If you even mention some of the solutions that we came up with, realtors would be like, "Oh, you're not allowed to do that." It's like, well, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not bound by RICA, right? So right. I mm-hmm. I can get more creative, and that's where I like to. We both like to operate is those creative solutions. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense just hearing through it. So you get a call, someone wants to sell. How are you dictating the value? Like, are you going on House Sigma or what does that process kind of kind of look like? Yeah, so we we do work with uh, with a realtor uh, that can give us uh, you know a comparative analysis on the property itself, and it really comes down to commi- uh, commissions. Uh, it comes down to the neighborhood, the street, you know, the. Uh, um, yeah, the condition of the home is actually huge because then it dictates your reno scope. Um, right. And then if it's a if it's a land deal, then it really depends on uh, zoning, the size of the lot. You know, uh, investor sentiment as well is huge on the builder. Like I said, like even on the flip side, it's green light, red light. We haven't seen that right now, but it you know it really depends on the time of year as well. Um, you know, if I'm getting a big flip, for example, in December and the closing is January first. You know, something that would take four to six months. It's like, well, that aligns nicely. If they close on a Jan one, you know, they'll be four months. Market. Four months are yeah. going to hit that yeah. spring market. So we gotta keep that in mind too with investors of timing that spring market. And there's a little bit of a fall bump market as well. In, yeah, you know, yeah. in the September. Yeah. So you know, we really do well if we align closings yeah, a few months before those timelines for flippers, anyways. Mm-hmm. For builders, the timelines are far out, anyways. You know, we're not really thinking about those things. Then they can manage that themselves. They'll manage that themselves. Yeah, but for flippers, we have to keep them cautious of, you know, when these clothings are so they can time the market. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're also considering the exit strategy. Sometimes we'll work backwards on a deal, right? Rather than looking at what the deal is worth today, what could be done to it. We'll go, what's the future? Um, Mm -hmm. What's the future of this project? Is it a development? Is that going to be a year out? What does that sale price look like? And then we're working backwards, backwards to pitch the property to the investor that way yeah. right mm-hmm. yeah there sometimes they're just operating in a budget and you know if a seller uh you know may be asking a little bit more than market value and this is the uh, the other fallacy of what some people say that we're just the low ballers and it's like i don't remember a land deal in the last two years that we paid substantially under market value it was pretty much market value right so mm-hmm. you know they, there's a well, quite a few lies going around in calgary about that that we're, we're we are low ballers but it's not it's just not true yeah you know we do give fair fair value and 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 all the flexibility options that we we provide to the seller i mean that's even if it was a little discounted from market value it's like that's more than uh, yeah. worth it and depending on the seller the seller's goals right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah like our services aren't for everybody that's yeah. what i yeah. what i yeah, like so to tell everything. yeah you know our sales team if, if people are hesitant on the phone about what we're offering it's like our 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 services are extremely unique and if they're not for you they're not for you if you totally can, if you can list your house on the market mm-hmm. and you can wait 30 60 90 days and you potentially have to do some repairs or inspections that's your best option take that option then yeah uh, right yeah for sure yeah. yeah and for real estate investors who you know, might have never worked with a wholesaler similar to us in alternative lending. Like, are there any do's and don'ts of what to do on how to, you know, best build a relationship with the wholesaler? Or, um, any do's or don'ts? Yeah. Yeah. How, For, yeah, like, how, yeah. Does, how does a client some, best work with it, you? Best leverage your piece in the, in the mm-hmm. ecosystem, so to speak. I think Brennan can probably speak most of this, but um from my perspective it's like word is bond if you say you're going to purchase something from us and then you don't purchase it uh that's like that's a a a tick off the box like the likelihood of us working with you again and i think that just goes for business in general similar from anything in business which is like that trust factor exactly the relationship the network is your net worth like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're operating above board and doing what you say and saying what you do then you're going to be successful if you're not Mm-hmm. Go try so, go, get back to the nine to five job and good yeah. luck. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's, yeah, it's true. That's uh, that is very much how I operate because I work on the disposition side is what we call that department when we work with the 
the investors directly. And yeah, your word is your bond. Like Anthony said, uh, if you say something, you need to do it. Um, when I get off the phone with you and I'm sending my pay or notifying my transaction coordinator of, of the details of the deal I just agreed upon on the phone, I should not get a phone call right. over the next like 48 hours. It's the deal is done, right? The paper is a formality. We need it for legal reasons. We need it because good paperwork equals good business, that, yeah. mm -hmm. all of the things, but I shouldn't have to worry about them going back unless there was actually something that um, maybe I didn't disclose because I didn't know about it. And there was something that was detrimental to the deal. Obviously I'm not crazy, you know, I'm going right, yeah. to be understanding to those things. Or a condition oh, that you're yeah. talking about yeah. while on the phone. Like, yeah, great. Exactly. We're identifying that as yeah. something you need to look into. Yeah. We'll make sure that's written in yeah. the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then for, so that's more for if you want to build a long-term relationship with us, if you do want to just enter our ecosystem and buy our deals, uh, you got to be prepared. You've got to know that mm -hmm. capital. You got to have your finances in order. You've got to know what you want. Yeah. And what's your five and 10 year goals? Because if you don't have that, then you're just, you're just doing it for fun. You're not even doing it for any particular reason. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do it. I do all of this for fun too. To be yeah. honest. But <laughs> I guess just like take it take it quite seriously. It's like There's know some intentionality what you there. Know your know your yeah. buy box and why is it your buy box is like a key thing, right? How many like we because I'm I I know we get it all the time where they haven't put any thought into any of this other than <laughs> they watch HGTV and they think investing in real estate is great. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like how many people will look to enter your guys' space and want to do business with you that have no bit have have not thought through any of this have not don't understand how to renovate don't have the cash don't have um, anything put together they're just you know throwing stuff against the wall so yeah. to speak i would say probably hundreds yeah i mean it's probably put a percentage to it it's probably in between 90 and 95 percent of people don't actually know what they do. okay yeah it's, that's good for our under, that's good for our underwriters to hear because yeah. they're always uh, yeah. uh yeah. one of ryan's goals is to hit uh like an approval ratio mm -hmm. of uh of 20 percent and uh so that's where we're where we're looking at you know 10 deals and saying no to eight of them mm -hmm. okay. uh, and a lot of it's because these people just uh aren't prepared they haven't yeah. done their homework they're just wasting everybody's time so to speak yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, they have dreams, aspirations. Sure, there's uh, there's lots of like there's lots of ed ed educational sources out there that you can, you know, get up to speed, or you could just watch and connect with other people as well. Like, go and see what other people are doing. If you see a rental yeah, like product hosting, in the market, you guys are hosting uh, networking yeah, I mean, there's events. Networking events we do it the second yeah. Tuesday of every month. Uh, Ryan, you're there as yeah. well, and uh, and you know you got to get out and and educate yourself you yeah gotta, you got to know what to do if you just have the capital that's only one piece of it mm -hmm. um you know you don't have to have 10 years of experience to get into this either is the other thing you just have to clearly define what you want yeah. to do mm -hmm. <laughs> that's very mm -hmm. important <laughs> I, I think another hurdle that we did have in the beginning and sometimes it does come up as well but like if you're looking to work with a wholesaler or a company like us you know <clears throat> We've had people really like they they see some of our assignment fees and and what we're making and in some cases they'll walk away from the deal or they'll go I'm not paying you that much money yeah. right when they see what we're making mm -hmm. right and it's like you got to understand that you know our fee is our fee and you're still gonna we're, we're ensuring that our deals are profitable on the back end yes um, but if you're gonna walk away from a deal because you see how much money we're making just like mm -hmm. good luck trying to build long term relationships yeah, yeah. and. Or, or it's just that entrepreneurial mindset. Like if yeah. you're so concerned about what the other guy's making versus mm -hmm. the value that they're providing. Exactly. Um, and and we, walk, we, we come across similarities. Like lot, yeah. we're an alternative mm -hmm. lender. We naturally have higher uh, interest rate. We charge our borrowers higher interest rates in the bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the most successful people get it. It's a line item mm -hmm. in their pro forma. Exactly. We're providing them access to capital through 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 speed, yeah. mm -hmm. through different types of leverage, through different types of product. Mm -hmm. Then um, in order for us to be profitable, that's what we need to charge to be here for you. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. if you're so focused mm -hmm. on a number versus your number, mm -hmm. yeah. then you got a problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the beautiful thing is Calvert um, funds our assignment fees, right? Yeah. So, that's right. Nice. Even the, hence, we build, pro we get it. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, we we built our products around ensuring that our bot that our borrowers are successful and mm -hmm. and uh, supporting wholesaler fees are absolutely a piece of yeah. their success. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And on that note, whenever people put in offers, are they always unconditional? Like to buy deals off of you? 
Are they allowed to put in conditions? Like, what is that kind of? What is that? You guys like? are in just just so the audience knows. Yeah. When you guys put an offer, yeah. you're unconditional. Mm -hmm. You're closing you're this 100%, deal. One hundred percent. You're going through, which is yeah. brilliant for your mm -hmm. seller. Yeah. They know yeah. we're closing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's certain deals. Uh, yeah. Uh, most of them we can uh, we can go unconditional, but the, there is certain ones, especially on the development side, where we do have to check some stuff with the architect, number of units and everything, right. the capability of the rezone, height of the building. Yeah. So there Those there is a few things to check, and in most cases, sellers totally understand that because it just. Well, it just makes sense. It's like, well, I'm not going to go unconditional unless I know, unless I built one next door. Yeah. Like, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to just go unconditional. Really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's really, uh, you guys, you guys fund, uh, mm -hmm. fund our assignments. I'm sorry. What was the, was there a question? Like a, there? For people who aren't aware of like, yeah. say if they, they haven't even used a private line, it, like, Hey, it. I want to buy, I'm seeing someone. Yeah. Hey, I want to build a relationship with these guys. I've yeah. bought and Mm -hmm. five properties before in the past am i mm -hmm. buying it just sight unseen no condition like so what is that kind of am i allowed to put in conditions that, that's like, that's market dependent mm -hmm. um again I'm, I'm the one who works with all these investors and i see a lot of guys uh you know wanting to even even in this market do finance conditions and all this you know all, all these different types yeah. of conditions but I really at this point all i'm accepting is the subject of viewing right yeah you're not it that is, kind of seller no no i just i need the guys that know what they want um, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of guys do buy sight unseen for land. It's not too important to go and see the asset as long as they know there is an asset there. Yeah, they can um, go on, on Google earth and exactly. get the satellite imagery. If it's yeah. land, they know exactly what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see the topography. Sure. Yep. <clears throat> Are you guys, so sight unseen, I think is a bit of a misnomer because when you're in the pro, like when you guys are accessing the property, when you're writing the deal, you're documenting this. Yes. You're, you're mm -hmm. providing them the yeah. walk through that kind of stuff. Exactly. Are you not? Yeah, mm -hmm. walk through, mm -hmm. you know, we give them a list of the upgrades that are in the home. We give them our best uh, estimate on what they should do. Uh, again, that is very loose. I don't like yeah, to you're exactly. Yeah, because you're exactly. Some guy exact. might spend twice exactly. as much on the same, on the same kind of, you know, same kitchen rental. One yeah. guy spends two times as much, so I can't. Yeah, you know, I just use my, you know, you know, the pricing that of materials and labor. You know, I use my best uh, best knowledge on on the reno scope or even the build scope, and um, yeah, so we we do document everything. You have the pictures of the property. You know, it's when I say sight unseen, it is sight unseen with it, it's a you know educated decisions these guys are still making. They're still totally. evaluating. They even go drive by. So like, they sight unseen could be just not scheduling a viewing to go inside then they not know. physically walk through it mm -hmm. yeah they know that the best deal is get it get it right away from us yeah, yeah. instead of uh, waiting around and that's when another thing new investors will have to understand is you got to be quick right mm -hmm. i mean these deals are gone in the first 48 hours yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So. priority goes to sight unseen guys yeah, who have the yeah. cash ready to go yeah. we'll leave money yeah. on the table for that and, and again, trust yeah. we've talked about right mm -hmm. like yeah if you have two buyers offering the exact same numbers mm -hmm. And you've done business with five versus done business zero or one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Human yeah. nature, business nature, yeah. you're going to go with who you have the relationship with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. And again, we're presenting these deals in such a way, just to add to your comment, Jesse, it's like, it's got to be a win-win. You know, we're not going to try to sell you or tell you something that's not true about the property. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, you know, disclosing any and all yeah. information that we have so that you can make an educated decision on purchasing this property. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you guys are thinking long term. One hundred percent. Yeah. If your buyer isn't successful, mm -hmm. you're not successful. Exactly. Your brand is not successful. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're 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 here for the betterment of mm -hmm. the, the yeah. user. Yeah. yeah. No, and especially you know the, the real estate, the business community in Calgary, it's pretty tight knit, pretty small. Word gets around fast. No, yeah, you know, yeah. you start doing things that are unethical, man. People are gonna find out real quick. At yeah. least in the real estate community, yeah, I've noticed sure. that for sure. Right? I think that is all business, kind of business, right? Like yeah. mm -hmm. you know, you can only. Yeah, the, the, your the lifetime of the business and your success is limited if you're in it mm -hmm. for the short term, mm -hmm. in it for the extra dollar here or there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not a good model. No, and how to, and it's not a good way to live. No, no, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we we experienced that in the beginning. A lot of a lot of guys tried to take us out by. Um, just unethical practices. We'll just yeah. put it that yeah. way. And we realize, okay, th these guys aren't going to last very long. No. And it's funny because now they try to reach back out to us to try to do business with us because we really became 
you know dominant in this in the space yeah, right? yeah. They, they can't ignore us anymore you know they yeah. tried to they tried to push us off to the side and you know do whatever they could to uh shut us up because we thought they thought you know we were taking their lunch whether it was agents yeah. or whoever it would have been yeah. right uh but now we're undeniable yeah. we're basically at the point where we're undeniable so you know they're trying to get back into our circle but Hey man, burn me once, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> right? You think there's too many good business practitioners. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's way too many. We focus on the good again. It's like let's focus on the guys that we've been making money with, mm-hmm. who are ethical, respectable. You mm-hmm. know, trying to actually build who something long term. Ourse- Another key thing is is it's not always just you know it, it, there has to be the win for the seller. So when we assign a deal, we are putting the deal mm-hmm. in the capable hands of the investor yes. who is controlling our reputation with the totally. seller. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we have to give it to the right guy in case what happens if a seller, you know, let's say, wants to close late. This has happened a lot of times. Or they need their money and they want to just all of a sudden do a rent back. This is after the deal, the deal's already nailed down mm-hmm. and already firm. Our buyers don't have to play, you know, uh, work with us on this stuff. But we set the expectation that, hey, you know, we got an interesting situation here. I'm going to need you to work with us. This might mm-hmm. be the closing day. Mm-hmm. But look, they might be, be five days late if you want to do a whole back shirt. Like we work with, we yeah, work on solutions yeah. and they understand mm-hmm. that our reputation is at stake. <clears throat> so that mm-hmm. needs to be first and foremost who we take care of. Is the seller. The, yeah, per- the, seller. the person we're purchasing yeah. the property yeah, from. Yeah, because it's, yeah, like. Interesting. I never thought of it like yeah. either. Yeah. So we have a lot of you. Wow. You're building creative solutions and while you're going into it with a contract, <clears throat> You'll have a feel, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. And hey, you know this seller's going through this. Their 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 mm-hmm. their circumstance is unique. There may be delays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to adapt to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or maybe a deposit release. They need a little yeah. cash now. You know, we signed some deals that are three four months out in closing, and it's like. You know, we signed the deal and, you know, we never agreed upon, let's say, a deposit return or something. Mm -hmm. And then Buddy's, you know, this just happened uh, three weeks ago. Buddy's truck broke down and he's like, yeah, he goes to take it in. It's like, oh, they can't fix it. He needs to buy a new truck. We had a $20,000 deposit put in like a few weeks prior. And uh, he asked, hey, can we do a deposit release on this? I know our your sales guy said that you can do this. Mm-hmm. I call my buyer and be like, look, you know, I would really appreciate if you do do this. You know, you don't have to, um, you know, uh, and then we just get him to sign the transfer docs early yeah. so that we're protecting that deposit. Yeah, yeah. Right? In, so in, it's, interesting. It, they, yeah. it's better. It's the yeah. contract in as long as you could work through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're creating exactly. wins everywhere. Creating exactly. wins for the seller. So, the buyer's even f- more firm. Good, mm-hmm. good luck getting that on the market. I doubt that you do deposit <laughs> releases on the market it's very rare no i would not see that very often yeah. people aren't thinking yeah. creative but it's very vanilla on the market which is great works for the bulk of people mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. what you're doing is entrepreneurial it's creative and yeah. in turn you need a certain type of person that's gonna work through that exactly yeah on the flip side of that have you ever had deals fall apart last minute and like any key learning lessons there um, where like whatever buyer said he'd close next week yeah, we've had things uh, change and we, now you're just scrambling. Make sure you have a good lawyer on your hair. Yeah, make sure you have a good lawyer. Uh, make sure you have good paperwork. Um, there was a couple instances where a buyer failed to close and uh, the seller actually didn't give leniency to the closing date. Ah. Um, and we, you know, there there's certain situations that it's like you have to still be planning, plan to be on time. Because mm-hmm. if the seller, you know, you know, we do the best to manage that relationship. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we do deal with some difficult people. Totally. And mm-hmm. They have all the right to enforce their contract. Yep. Right. Yeah. So on you both still sides. Have to be, on both sides. Yeah. This is both. And buyer our buyers and so could do that mm-hmm. too. Like I, the story I just told about the deposit release, the buyer can tell me no, but they also understand that they want to keep the deals coming. Right. So they have to, they're almost doing, you know, twice the promising on the other end. They're like, they're promising to fall through on the contract. You know, via sign yeah, contract, yeah. and then also they're 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 promising to work with us to be flexible, as well yeah. to be flexible mm-hmm. to change mm-hmm. a contract. <laughs> but the seller is again dictating the sale. So this is the value of like you can change things. Like we actually just did a. This we don't want to change things. We don't. <laughs> want, we, we don't want to. No, I'm not yeah. trying to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But we we can be flexible and we, and we can tell the seller no. You know, if they're if they're taking us for unreasonable, a ride, yeah, unreasonable. We 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 have in the past said no. That's enough. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you've changed mm-hmm. enough things. Um, but we had this one seller here. I just met with them on uh, a couple of days ago, and we had signed this deal with her back in uh, December, 
and it was supposed to be a March close. And then in January, she changed it to June closing. And then she told us, oh, now I'm not looking. Now I don't want to sell. I want out of this contract. Well, as we all know, the market did go up, um, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, potentially it could be up fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 uh, from what we bought it from. Right. Technically, our investors getting that uplift. You know, we actually went in and uh, she wanted out of the contract. We actually convinced her to do a September closing and we would actually give her another 25 G's. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Of this like yeah. forced appreciation that we did not yeah. have to give. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, like if it was on the other foot and the market went down. Exactly. Yeah. We we should, are they we forking did. out to you? Well, no, yeah. they, they wouldn't. And, and we did pitch it that way, but we also didn't want any litigation problems. And of it's course. like, what is the cost of a litigation? 20 G's probably. Mm-hmm. So let's just cut to the chase. Never it's mind like what breed damage. Want, right. Mm-hmm. Never mind mm-hmm. the breed damage, the time spend it's like you know we we worked with that and i'm not setting precedence that that's what's going to happen with you you know but if you do have a good story and you know you got it the seller has to sell us sometimes too right yeah and and that's what ended up happening and we were all in agreement of it you know we already got that 60k uptick you know we extended closing another three months which could amount to another 10 15 20 thousand Mm -hmm. uptick in appreciation so it's like we only gave away that we already got our you know, maybe 50, 60 appreciation and we're giving up this other portion. And then we don't have to worry about closing from September now. So we're just hedging the market. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it it continues to go the right way. Exactly. It could definitely go the other way, but uh, you know, our guys are, Pretty confident. So. Yeah. yeah. This this is a really good explanation of the value that we provide on both yeah. ends. It's, it's yeah. totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. And it's very, it's very flexible. It's very mm-hmm. creative, <clears throat> and you need good people that are thinking like minded to be able yeah. to execute on this. Yeah. Because it's not easy. Yeah. And I think maybe that's something you know for anybody that's watching, like if you're in a different city or looking to work with a different wholesaler, like ensure that they are taking things from a to z that you're not just signing an assignment contract yeah. and they're walking away and you're left to deal with the mess Good at, luck. Yeah. At, the yeah. clo- at the on closing day right yeah because that could happen especially when you know the marketing that's being put out there uh, you know sell your home in 14 days whatever it may be cash close and you know the property is supposed to be vacant and they don't move out or it's it's full of belongings like we're there Mm-hmm. Yeah. At that every closing, yeah. Type yeah. If there was something yeah. that was agreed upon and and something changed, we we're we're there to address it and ensure mm-hmm. that everyone still can you know salvage that win win win. Awesome. I know we covered a lot. Just curious, uh, in the future, what's your guys' plans for maybe for cash for cash and yeah, growing the company personally. Um, or yeah. business wise. Well, we're we're gonna continue to grow. Um, you guys know a few of the details of what our plans over the next year. We're not mm-hmm. quite ready to announce that to the to the public uh, for a few of those things. Um, mm-hmm. But we do just plan on stay growing. tuned. Yeah, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. 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 It should be pretty quick here that we'll uh, be making some announcements. But uh, mm-hmm. we just continue to grow, grow our team, uh, grow our culture within the team, mm-hmm. uh, ensure that we're all striving to uh, you know just a an, an abundant. Uh, life an abundant mindset uh, that goes with investors as well we want to you know deepen those relationships uh, deepen our relationship with you guys as well um, and just anyone else that wants to do bi- good business right we're mm-hmm. we're just looking to continue leaning into that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. building that amazing product and service that you guys yes. have built yeah exactly. exactly yeah continue to do that you know expand to other markets serve other markets and uh one of them being mexico potentially have been spending a lot of time Ooh. down there so okay there's a little drip yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. We'll give you give you that much, I guess. But um, yeah, just to echo what Brennan said. Yeah, continue to grow our team and provide an extremely valuable service. And and again, even you know, looking at it from like serving our community and the way yeah. we're transforming communities. Yeah. You know, it's um, we you know we were doing some stuff looking at the economic impact of of what we are doing, what we're building, adding units to the you know to the to the housing market, um, and again improving communities. Like it's we want to continue yeah. continue to do that. Really lean into that. Yeah, brilliant. Perfect. Really appreciate you guys' time. Where should people get in touch with you if they're if they're interested? Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram quite a bit. It's uh, Brennan buys bungalows, um, uh, or you can just visit our website uh, wholesaleproperty.ca. Uh, you can even go to our cashinhomes.com if you're looking to sell. Um, even if you're looking to invest and you want to reach out, you can you can reach on uh, on those three mediums. Uh, even on Facebook, we have a Cash and Homes Facebook page. Uh, we have a whole team of people. We have 10 people on our team now. So someone's going to get back to you, whether it's, uh, you know, Candace, Carrie, or one of our uh, office managers. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Appreciate your guys' time. And yeah. 
looking forward to yeah just watching you guys grow it's been uh, awesome working with you guys love what you're doing and looking forward to just deepening the relationship awesome. definitely awesome right on. thanks for having us yeah Thank yeah, you. yeah right on guys that wraps up another episode of the real estate and wealth podcast be sure to hit that like button share with fellow real estate enthusiasts and subscribe to stay in the loop on all upcoming episodes get in touch with the team at calvert home mortgage investment corporation by calling them at one 888 752-4642 or email admin at chmic.ca. The opinions expressed in each episode belong to the individuals featured and do not represent the views of Calvert Home Mortgage. While we provide valuable insights, consulting with qualified professionals ensures that your unique financial circumstances are carefully considered aligning your investments with your long-term objectives. Calvert Home Mortgage Investment Corporation is not a financial advisor and we cannot advise you on making investments. There are risks to investing in real estate and the potential that you can lose all of your investment.